What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's CJ for Out of Bounds DFS. And in today's video, we're doing another first look at the prize picks NBA board for February 16th. It's a little bit after 1130 here on the East Coast. So the projections you see in today's video, both on Roto Grinders, who is our reference website, and prize picks will likely change throughout the day. And in fact, there has already been some significant projection changes over on prize picks. Guys like Giannis Attentacumpo, Nikola Jokic, Zion Williamson have already seen their projections rise significantly just this morning in the last couple of hours. So the lines makers or the algorithms, whatever they're using over there at prize picks are already in effect. They're already making adjustments. And the cat and mouse game continues. If this is your first time in the channel, welcome to Out of Bounds DFS. On this channel, we talk all things single player daily fantasy sports. So if you're into playing on prize picks, if you're into monkey knife fight, if you're into thrive fantasy, this might be the perfect channel for you as we discuss all of these emerging single player daily fantasy sites daily here. So hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my videos, like this video, comment below, and share it with the entire world. We are over 500 subscribers in just about six weeks on YouTube, so I'm loving the growth, loving the support, and uh, this has a lot of potential. Both the single-player daily fantasy sites that we talk about, this channel, the community, a lot of potential, a lot of room for growth here. Uh, really excited to be a part of what's going on. So, Short slate tonight, a little six gamer, six banger for the NBA tonight. Let's talk about injury news real quick. Top of the list here, we've got Drew Holiday, point guard for the Milwaukee Bucks is out due to COVID protocol. Anthony Davis, power forward for the Lakers is out with an Achilles injury. He's going to miss a couple of games at least. D'Angelo Russell, shooting guard for the Minnesota T-Wolves is out with a leg injury. CJ McCollum, Yusuf Nurkic, both Portland Trailblazers guys are going to be out indefinitely. SGA continues to sit out for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Kevin Durant, out. He's going to be missing a couple of games as well due to a hamstring, so we got to expect more production from James Harden, Kyrie Irving, and, and the bunch. Uh, Will Barton, small forward for the Denver Nuggets, is out. Marcus Smart is out for Boston. OG Ananobi, small forward for the Toronto Raptors, is doubtful with a calf strain. And finally, Paul Millsap, power forward for the Denver Nuggets, is out with a knee injury. And those are the big ones that we need to discuss. So without further ado... Let's start talking some prize picks projections. And as I mentioned, Nikola Jokic is one of these guys that uh, has already been bumped up significantly today. So he started off the morning around 50 fantasy points. He's already up at 55 fantasy points, as you can see, versus Boston tonight. That game tips off at 7, 10 p.m. So let's head over to Roto Grinders and take a look at the projections for Nikola Jokic and see where they have him. As you can see here, guys, they got him marked at 54.09 fantasy points on Roto Grinders, which is, um, you know, a lot more in line with this 55. Now, if it was still set at 50 and you took the over on Jokic, well, kudos to you. You may have found a winning edge there on Nikola Jokic. Let's look at his recent games and see what the Joker has been up to. He's got 57.2, which would put him over his 55 tonight. And well over the 50 if you were one of the lucky ones. 55.1, again, more than 50, more than 55. 41.2, 58.4, and 88.6. So his five-game snapshot here, guys, he has only failed to hit 55 or more in just one game, putting up a, a lousy 41.2, and that was against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now looking back here, I don't see a game log of Jokic versus Boston, so... It's fair for us to go ahead and talk minutes. And uh, he's expected to play about 36 minutes in this game. He is a versatile big. Boston has allowed a little over 28 fantasy points per game to versatile bigs this season, uh, making them the 18th most generous defense to versatile bigs so far this season. This is a two games and three nights situation for Jokic. He's playing just under 36 minutes per game and his fantasy points per minute guys is one of the best in the league. He's at 1.58 fantasy points per minute and his usage rating for a center is also very impressive. 
just under 30, which would put him in that elite status for me. 29.98. So we know what we're getting from Jokic. He is a fantasy monster, no doubt about it. Now we got to skip ahead here and talk game totals and spread, which is a big thing that I've been emphasizing on and trying to stress to you guys as prize picks players because games with blowouts, uh, when you take a full game over on a guy like Jokic with a huge like 55 fantasy point uh, projection out there, well, you got to have him out there for the entirety of the game. He's got to play four quarters most nights in order to get over the projection of 55 or more points. So tonight, Boston, 111.25 versus Denver at 108.75. So you're looking at about a two to three point spread here. So this game does look like it's going to stay close. It looks like it's it should stay competitive as well. Boston is the slight favorite at home, but uh, yeah, I'm not too worried about this one being a runaway or a blowout by any means. So this gets a green light go for me. And uh, in terms of game total, I do wish it was a little bit higher. This one looks like it's going to be right about that 220 combined point range. Uh, I like targeting players over in games where the totals are like 230 points or more. Uh, typically, when games are higher scoring totals like that, you're going to get more real life points. You're going to get more single stats like assists. You're going to get more rebounds, and overall, your fantasy production out of players in that game will be much, much higher. So keep that in mind. Now, Nikola Jokic is a slight under based on the current projections on prize picks and roto grinders. So moving on to the next guy, we've got to talk Jason Tatum, who is the top star for the Boston Celtics. He's projected at 46 today, taking on this Denver Nuggets team. So let's take a look at Tatum and see where they've got him on Roto Grinders. They got him at 44.72. Now, if we round that up and call it 45, that's still not enough to reach 46. So first look here, it looks like the under is the way to go on Jason Tatum. Looking at his recent game logs, he had a bad game here. 22.6 fantasy points, only played 23 minutes, guys. So you got to keep that in mind. That was a big reason why he had such a miserable performance but he also didn't shoot very well three for 14 21 percent from the field awful awful shooting performance for tatum there kind of a uh outlier i would say for tatum typically a very good player now 54.7 41.7 33.8 and a 41.3 so you could see in his five game snapshot here he's only went over tonight's fantasy projection once and that was against the detroit pistons we don't have a game log of Tatum versus Denver to discuss, so we can move ahead and talk minutes where he is projected to play 37 tonight. He's a versatile forward. Denver quite generous to versatile forwards, allowing almost 36 fantasy points per game to that type of player. And that makes them the eighth most generous to versatile forwards in the entire league. So like in the matchup here on paper for Tatum, it's looking very good. This is a two-game and three-night situation for Tatum. 35.3 minutes per game with a 1.23 fantasy points per minute, coupled along with a 30.28 usage rating. So anytime the fantasy points per minute is one or higher, that's typically very good. And anytime the usage rating is 25 or higher, that's very good. But if it's 30 or higher, that's elite. That means that that guy is heavily involved in the offense for his team, which Tatum is, as you can tell, by the 30.28 usage rating. So slight over, or I'm sorry, slight under on Jason Tatum uh, based on his projection on prize picks tonight. But this game, you know, not the highest, not the greatest in terms of team totals here. So maybe the under is the way to go on Jason Tatum. Uh, we will definitely dig in deeper with the premium spreadsheet that I put together for my premium members in the Discord community. By the way, I know the Discord link is having problems. I'm going to try and keep refreshing it daily with a new link. I don't know why it keeps expiring. I don't know why uh, it, it, you know doesn't work for you, for some of you guys. Uh, I know that the, that it's working somewhere, some way, because new people keep entering the Discord daily. So we're growing, growing, and growing more. But I'll try and work on getting that Discord link up and running for you guys. Anyways, the next game we have to talk about here is the New Orleans Pelicans as they take on the Memphis Grizzlies. That game tips off at 7.40 p.m. on prize picks. Now, here's another guy that we mentioned earlier whose projections have started to rise 
early this morning. So I don't know if uh, Prize Picks is seeing a lot of action on the overs on some of these guys, like the Jokic's, the Zion's, the Giannis's, or whatever. But uh, for whatever reason, the projections are on the rise. So he is currently set at 41, which is a bit higher than Zion has been projected in recent days. Typically, he's been around that 39 fantasy point projection, and I think that's where he started the morning or started the day. But if we head to Roto Grinders and look at their projections, they've got him at 40.4, which puts him about one point four, or which puts him about one point under his projection of 41. Now he has been playing some pretty good basketball in his last couple of games, putting up a 45.1 performance, 49.4. Those would both be good for overs on his current projection. And especially good for an over if you got him when he was reduced earlier at like 39 fantasy points before they started hiking up his projection. Now he's got a 37.8, a 38.5, and a 45.3 in his recent game logs as well. So you could see that at his current projection of 41, he has went over three times out of his last five games. So pretty good success rate there in terms of hitting the mark. Now, we do have a recent game log of Zion Williamson versus this Memphis Grizzlies team. Back on February 6th, he played over 33 minutes, ended the game with 45.3 fantasy points. So that would put him over the projection of 41 by quite a bit. So that's a pretty good sign for Zion Williamson and uh, what might be to come for him tonight. But anyway, his minutes are set at 33, according to the folks at Roto Grinders. He is a versatile forward. Now, versatile forwards, um, Memphis pretty generous to him, allowing 34.19 fantasy points per game to players like Zion Williamson. Uh, that makes them the 13th most, most generous to versatile forwards in the league. Two games and three nights for Z. 32.7 minutes per game, slightly under 33 minutes per game. Still a pretty good, healthy total for him there. And his fantasy points per minute are also very good and healthy. 1.22 fantasy points per minute, good production. And his usage is over 27 at 27.04. Now, we got to look at the game totals and spread here. And this one looks to be very good in terms of fantasy potential, single stat potential, with Memphis as a slight half point favorite at home, 116, New Orleans, 115 and a half. So if you look there, just a half a point in terms of spread. So this gets a green light for me, no question about it, no doubt. Also gets the green light in my stamp of approval for the uh, game total, topping out at over 230 combined points for these two teams. So this looks like a game with tons of fantasy upside here. So. You know, whether you like taking the fantasy point projections, whether you like taking the single stats in terms of points, rebounds, assists, this game is just oozing, oozing with potential. So I'm liking what I'm seeing there. So just for the record, Zion Williamson projected at 40 would put him slightly under, but it looks like it's going to be a close one for Z. Now talking the other side of this game, we've got John Morant, who is currently projected at 38. Now, as I just mentioned, the game totals and the spread look very, very good in terms of uh, fantasy potential here. But Ja has been a guy who has let me down in uh, more ways than one. And uh, I'll tell you why here if we look at his projection. Now, I say he's let me down. Well, really, I don't know. Maybe he's let his fans down. But I've been taking the over on Ja most nights, and it's been working out. So his projection is set at 34.91. Even if it's rounded up to 35, that still puts him three points under his current projection of 38 over on prize picks. So the under looking like the way to go. So let's look at his game logs and see why I like the under most nights on John ja Morant. Well, 28.2, very disappointing game. Despite playing 32 minutes, nearly 32 minutes, only put up 28 fantasy points. 39.6 against the Lakers. Now that was a better game for him, putting him over tonight's projection by 1.6 points, but a 33.1, 34.9, and a 32.1. So if we combine these five games, if we look at them holistically here, he's only went over 38 fantasy points once in five games. But if we go back even further and look at his last 10 to 12 games here, look at how many times he's actually managed to go over 38. Once, twice, 
two times in about 10 to 12 games. So I still think this 38 is probably a bit too high on John ja Moran, even though the total looks good, even though the spread is favorable. But if we look at his last uh, matchup here against New Orleans back on February 6th, he played 31 minutes and ended the game with 32.1 fantasy points. So as you can see, that kind of lends itself to what I am saying here. It agrees with the fact that going under on John Morant has just been the way to go lately. And uh, there's just no bones about it. That's just the way it's been. But John Morant is pro projected to play about 32 minutes tonight against New Orleans. He is considered to be a combo guard. Now, working in Ja Morant's favor is this big figure right here, which is the amount of fantasy points per game that the New Orleans Pelicans allowed to combo guards this season, which is over 50. 50.58 fantasy points. So I would say that this is an advantageous position for John Morant, a game where he should be able to exceed his projection on prize picks of 38, but... You never know. So this makes uh, New Orleans the 12th most generous team in the entire league to combo guards. This is a two games and three nights situation for Ja. Playing just slightly under 30 minutes a game. 1.13 fantasy points per minute. Pretty good total there, or average there. And then his usage is 30.56. Good usage rating as well. So... Bit of a tricky situation for Job, but I'm going to keep clicking the under because it's been working out in our favor more often than not, guys. So that's just the way I'm feeling about it. This is going to be one of the more controversial calls, I think. So you guys let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Are you, you liking John Moran over, under? How are you feeling? Or maybe he's a fade. Maybe you're just not going to go there at all, and that's always a, a good play, a good option as well. So let's skip ahead, and we'll talk about the next game on the slate which is going to be the Toronto Raptors taking on the Milwaukee Bucks this game has a lot of uh big names in it Pascal Siakam Giannis Antetokounmpo Fred Van Vliet Chris Middleton Kyle Lowry on and on but the first guy on the board that we're going to talk about is going to be Pascal Siakam who is projected for 39 fantasy points so let's go find Siakam here on Roto Grinders and see where they've got him projected at the moment. So Siakam is set at 39.26, putting him just slightly, ever so slightly over that projection of 39. Let's look into the game logs and see if Siakam over or under makes the most sense today. So in his last game against Minnesota, you can see he had a very good game. 42.6 points would put him well over the 39. Now this one against Boston, 32.8 would put him well under, 40 would just barely squeak him by that 39 point projection. Here's another monster game, 52, hit the 50 burger on us. And then a 41.7 performance would also be good for an over. So he's been playing pretty good basketball as of late. If you look at his last five games here, he's went over tonight's projection of 39 in four of five games. Very good success rate. And even if you go back a little bit further here, he's went over that 39 another uh, one, two, three more times. So very good uh, basketball out of Pascal Siakam lately. Looking back here, we do have a game log back on January 27th when Toronto faced Milwaukee. Siakam played a little over 35 minutes, uh, didn't shoot the ball particularly well, attempted 12 shots, ended up converting on five of those. Anyway, he ended up finishing the game with just 24.3 fantasy points, so... He struggled, guys. Uh, maybe that's a little bit of an indicator of what is to come for him tonight in this rematch, but let's see if we could get a little clearer pic picture here on Pascal Siakam. He's projected to play 36 minutes. He is a versatile forward. Now, the Milwaukee Bucks, although they limited Pascal Siakam's production in their earlier meeting, it looks like overall on the season, they are pretty generous when it comes to allowing fantasy points per game to versatile forwards. They allow over 35 fantasy points per game, uh, making them the ninth most generous to the versatile forward archetype. Now, this is a two games and three nights situation for Siakam. He's playing over 35 minutes per game, almost at that 36 mark, so good minutes per game for him. 1.1 fantasy points per minute to go along with a usage rating of 25. Puts him in that good to very good category for me in terms of uh, fantasy point per minute production and his involvement and usage inside this Toronto Raptors offense. So let's move ahead here and talk game totals and spread. 
Now this one is looking like another potential source of some fantasy goodness as Milwaukee is uh, projected to score 120.75 points, a very huge team total there. Toronto is an underdog by six points on the road. Uh, projected to score 114.75 points. So you're talking about a six-point spread. This is not a green light go. I don't feel completely confident that this game stays close and competitive. Uh, I would have to probably put this one into the yellow or orange category where you know you hope Toronto has the talent to stick around with this Milwaukee Bucks team, make it competitive, and uh, get you get you four quarters of of, of basketball. So. I'm hoping that's what happens here, but I'm loving the combined total here of 235 plus points. So that should be a good, good way to get some some single stat, whether it be points, rebounds, assists, or fantasy production out of these guys. I like this game as a good source of, of fantasy potential. So Giannis Attentacumpo, the other guy on this, uh, this, this game here that we're going to talk about, 58 is his projection. I mentioned it earlier. I think he started the day at about 55. They've jacked him up already to 58, a three-point fantasy point increase for Giannis Antetokounmpo as he takes on this Raptors team. So let's take a look at Giannis and see where they've got him projected today on Roto Grinders. Well, my goodness, maybe the 55 still isn't high enough. I mean, they've got him... I'm sorry, maybe the 55 wasn't high enough, so they jacked it up to 58, but maybe the 58 still isn't high enough. Even at 58 points, the 60 here would put him over by two plus fantasy points. So they're projecting a pretty big game for Giannis tonight. Let's see why. Well, right off the bat here, you can see his last three games have been very, very good for Giannis. 72.4 fantasy points, massive game there. 65, a 68. And then you got a couple where he didn't perform so well, 47.8 and 41.7. So <clears throat> in his last five games, guys, he's went over today's projection of 58, a total of three out of five times. Pretty good success rate there. If we head back and go back to January 27th against Toronto, he played over 37 minutes, ended up finishing with 60 point one fantasy points, which would make him an over on today's projection uh, current projection of 58 fantasy points. So good indicator there. Now today they've got him projected to play about 36 minutes. He's considered a versatile forward. Versatile forwards against the Raptors have done well this season. The Raptors are allowing 37.24 fantasy points per game to versatile forwards, making the making them the fourth most generous defense to versatile forwards like Giannis Attentacumpo this season. Now, this is a two games and three nights situation in terms of the rest situation around Giannis. He is playing over 33 minutes per game, 1.61 fantasy points per minute. Guys, it's going to be hard to find anybody putting up better fantasy point per minute numbers than Giannis. And the Greek Freak, his, his uh, usage rating is also off the charts, 33.64. So as long as he's out on the floor and he's getting minutes, this guy is going to have his hands all over this game. His fingerprints will be all over the game, all over the basketball for this Milwaukee Bucks team. So I'm loving the total here. I'm loving the spread. I think that if you are concerned about a full game format, because of the uh, the spread, spread is a little high for my liking. If you think it blows out, if you think it gets out of hand for whatever reason, then definitely consider just taking Giannis Attentacumpo in a first half format only. And you could always go with the over depending on uh, where that is set up uh, throughout the day. As I said, these projections, they change all the time. So what you see here and now may not be what you see later as uh, Price Picks is doing their thing in, in, in the background behind the scenes. So Good game to target, though, for some fantasy uh, production. Now, let's move ahead here. We got another game to talk about. The Los Angeles Lakers taking on the Minnesota Timberwolves. This is probably the highest I've seen LeBron James in recent memory. I mean, he was floating, hovering right around that 48 fantasy point mark for most of these nights here recently. And now he's all the way up at 54. Now, a lot of that's going to have to do with Anthony Davis Davis is uh, going to be out, I think, indefinitely, they said. He did something to his, uh, I think it was his Achilles. He was dealing with an Achilles issue recently. So 54 is the mark for LeBron. Let's take a look at 
where they've got him over on Roto Grinders. They got him at 51. So according to Roto Grinders, that 54 is going to be too rich and LeBron won't get there, making him a candidate, a prime candidate here as an under if you're looking to lock in some early lineups. Well, let's skip ahead and see what he's been up to in recent games. 49.5 against Denver. Good, but not good enough to reach uh, tonight's projection. 51.8, also very good. 43.7, 69.8, and a 60.5. So in his last five games, he has managed to reach over 54 points just twice in five games. Now, the dynamic will definitely change without Anthony Davis around. LeBron, you will not be able to coast anymore, my friend. You will not be able to rely on uh, your your wingman, Anthony Davis, as much. Uh, so I expect LeBron's production to go up. I expect Dennis Schroeder's production to go, go up. I expect uh, Kyle Kuzma, Montrez Harrell, all those guys will have to step their games up and will take on much larger roles than they have to start the season. Now, he's facing Minnesota tonight. I don't see a game log in recent weeks or days of him against the T-Wolves. So let's talk his minutes tonight. 35 minutes in this one. He is a versatile forward. Minnesota has been pretty tough on versatile forwards. Uh, Just the 27th most generous, putting them as one of the stingier teams in terms of fantasy points per game in the entire league. They're not allowing a ton of points to versatile forwards such as LeBron. But this is LeBron. He's kind of in the category all his own. We shouldn't lump him in, group him in with all the other versatile forwards because, come on, this is King James we're talking about here. Matchups don't apply to him. This is two games and three nights for LeBron. He's averaging nearly 35 minutes per game. 1.39 1.39 fantasy points per minute put him up in that elite tier for me. And his usage is also up in the elite tier at 32.02. So LeBron still doing his thing after all these years. Now the game totals here, eh, not so impressive, but uh, you know, not one that I think that we should just completely avoid if you see a play that you like. Now, Minnesota, they're at 108, which makes them a pretty sizable underdog at home. LA, 114.5, so that's about a six and a half point spread. So I can't call this green. I'd have to put it in the yellow to orange category. There is definitely some risk here. Even without Anthony Davis, the Lakers are still probably the much better team, more talented team, and I think Minnesota's going to have a hard time trying to stay in this one, especially without like D'Angelo Russell in there. It's really going to come down to Carl Anthony Towns, Malik Beasley, uh, Anthony Edwards. Those guys will have to step up, but I just think that they don't have the talent to really compete with this Lakers squad. So for me, probably not playing anybody in this game in terms of a full Uh, Full game format, probably not taking anybody in a single stat format. I'd probably reserve this game for first half only and look to exploit the uh, game there. So enough about the Lakers side. We got to talk the Minnesota Timberwolves side. And I mentioned Carl Anthony Towns and his name. Well, we got to talk the big cat because he's starting to find his groove. I think he's starting to get comfortable, get his legs back, get his wind back. Tonight, he's projected for 43.76. If we round it up and call it 44, that still puts him a couple points under this big 46 mark for Carl Anthony Towns. So let's dig into his recent game logs and see what Carl Anthony Towns has been up to since returning to this T-Wolves lineup. So we've got just three games since he's returned to the Minnesota uh, T-Wolves lineup, 42.7, 45.6, and a 34.5. So that 46 mark, he hasn't hit it yet. Now, he came pretty close here against Charlotte with this 45.6, but as you can see, he's not a big minutes guy, or it hasn't been yet, but his minutes are trending up. 30.87, 31.52, and a 33.45. So he's going in the right direction. That's why I say I think he's starting to get his legs back. I think the cardio is starting to get there, and uh, his minutes are starting to rise. So I'm liking what I'm seeing from Carl Anthony Towns here. Now tonight, they got him projected to play about 32 minutes in this one. He is a versatile big, and uh, the Lakers... 
They are the 10th most generous defense to versatile bigs. Guys like Carl Anthony Towns, who play like him, uh, have averaged about 31.61 fantasy points per game against this Lakers team. So the matchup looks pretty juicy on paper. And of course, Minnesota doesn't have a whole lot of options. So I expect Carl Anthony Towns to get the ball and they'll play the uh, run the offense rather through him. They'll play through him. So two games and three nights for Cat. 32 and a half minutes per game, 1.43 fantasy points per minute. Very good so far since returning. And then the usage is at 26.34. That's going to go up without a guy like D'Angelo Russell in the lineup. So I think the uh, potential here in terms of usage and fantasy points is good for Car Anthony Towns. And that number, both of those numbers really should rise. Just a little concern here with the uh, spread, guys. And the total's not the greatest on the Minnesota side. So be careful with taking the, any overs on Carl Anthony Towns. If you're going to play him, probably stick to just a first-half format, as I mentioned before, when discussing LeBron James. So let's move ahead here to the next game. It looks like the, uh, you know, as always, per usual, the Prize Picks website is trying to wig out on me during this wonderful video I like to provide for you guys. So there we go. We're back on track. Let's scroll down here and talk the next game. We've got the Portland Trail Blazers taking on the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, this game is probably going to be a blowout, and I haven't looked at game totals or anything, but I'm just thinking, you know, no SGA for the Oklahoma City Thunder. How in the world are they going to keep up with the likes of uh, Damian Lillard and company? But let's talk Dame first. He's at 51 right now, which is a bit higher than he's been in recent games. He's been right around that 49, 50 mark in recent weeks. Tonight, the 51 looks like a good number for Damian Lillard as Roto Grinders agrees that 51 is, is, is on point. It's on point. There's really not an edge for us here. Um, in his last few games, 52.1 would put him over. Now, he failed to go over in those three games, 36.1, 45.9, and a 46. But he did go over back here against the Knicks at 55.3. So in his last five, he's went over twice in five games. Not a great success rate for Dame. Now, I mentioned he is taking on Oklahoma City. We do have a previous game log to look at. Back on January 25th, he faced off against the Thunder, put up uh, over 38 minutes in that game, didn't shoot particularly well, struggled 8 for 22 shooting, and uh, finished the game with 45.2 fantasy points, so he would have fallen quite a bit short of tonight's projection of 51. So maybe the 51 is just a little too rich for Damian Lillard. And uh, let's talk minutes. 37 minutes is his projected total tonight. He is a combo guard. Working in his favor is this average right here, 49.87. That's the amount of fantasy points per game that Oklahoma City has allowed to combo guards this season. So mm, I'm liking what I'm seeing there. He, uh, the, Oklahoma City Th <laughs> the Oklahoma City Thunder ranks 16th. Uh, they are the 16th most generous to combo guards. This is a two games and three nights situation for Dame. He's playing just under 36 minutes per game. Now his fantasy points per minute and usage are great. Uh, 1.29 to go along with a usage rating of 32.39. So love to see that for Lillard. Now if we look at the game totals and spread, yeah, it's kind of as I thought. Oklahoma City is projected by Vegas odds makers to struggle to keep up with Portland in this game. OKC, they are the home team, but they are also the underdog, 109.25. Versus Portland, who are six-point favorites. So, again, can't call this one a green. I'd have to put it in the yellow to orange range. If you're going to take anyone from this game, make sure you do it in first-half formats. I'd probably avoid taking anyone in a single stat situation from here. Um, as, you know, most of the starters, I would say, should probably see the bench by about the fourth quarter if this game goes as planned. So, Definitely be careful with taking anybody over in a full game format, taking any single stats over in a full game format. If anything, lean toward the unders if you want to take full game guys. But we got to talk the other side of this one. We got big Al Horford, who is uh, sadly, but but truly the most uh, highest projected player for the Oklahoma City Thunder tonight. He is set at 36 fantasy points. So let's take a look and find Al Horford here on Roto Grinders. They got him listed at center. Yeah, yeah, he's a center. Sorry, the positions are a little different between prize picks and FanDuel. We use FanDuel projections because they're the 
same as prize picks. So uh, Al Horford, though, projected at 37.94. Guys, that's very close to 38. So let's call it 38, round up to 38. That put him about two points over his projection on prize picks. Looking at his recent games here, 41.9, very good game there. That would put him over by quite a bit. 28 would put him under by quite a bit on tonight's projection. 59.6, huge game there. Big time over. 28.5 would be a big time under. And then you got 59.4, another huge over for Al Horford. So in his last five games, guys, he's went over today's projection. Total of three times out of five. Pretty good success rate there. Now against Portland, uh, there is a game log here, but he failed to play in that game. So he missed that game. We don't have a real good idea of how he did in his previous matchup because he wasn't there for it. So if we uh, move ahead here, we can talk minutes, 29 minutes. Not a great total, but he's a pretty good fantasy points per minute producer. So he doesn't need a ton of minutes to get there. Now he's a versatile big. And uh, Portland, they're allowing 31.72 points per game to versatile bigs. He'll probably be matched up with Enos Cantor, who's not known as a great uh, stingy type of defender down low. So Al Horford should have an opportunity here to produce against Cantor. The um, Portland Trail Blazers are the ninth most generous to versatile bigs. This is a two games and three nights situation for Big Al, averaging over 28.2 minutes per game for the season. And his fantasy points per minute and usage are not bad for a big man. 1.17 to go along with a usage rating of 22.62. Again, those numbers should be on the rise without SGA in the lineup. And I expect Al Horford to have to shoulder an even bigger load without Gilgius Alexander in there. So, uh, you know, blowout potential for sure. Probably, you know, same thing as the uh, other side of this game, the Portland side. If you're going to take guys like Al Horford, take him in first half only, especially Al Horford, who is getting up there in years. He's an older player. If this game gets out of hand in like the late second quarter, third quarter, Al Horford will probably be uh, glued to the bench for the entire fourth quarter. They're just not going to run his old butt out there for very long if this game isn't competitive. So we can skip ahead and talk the next game on the board, which Features the Brooklyn Nets taking on the Phoenix Suns and talk about star power. I mean, even with Kevin Durant out of the lineup, you still got the likes of James Harden, Kyrie Irving for Brooklyn. Then you've got Devin Booker, Chris Paul on the other side for the Phoenix Suns. So this is setting up to be one of those run and gun, high scoring, fast paced type of games. And uh, we'll take a look at the game totals and I'm sure that they will back that up. But James Harden is set at 52. He was a guy that I liked over yesterday against the Sacramento Kings, and he ended up coming through for us. Maybe this 52 is just a little too low. Prize picks, if you're watching this video, don't you dare, don't you dare go change James Harden's projection. We want him at 52. Uh, his projection on Roto Grinders is at 52.8, which would put him slightly over, slightly over. Now let's dig into the, the game logs real quick and see what he's been up to. You can see why I like the over on James Harden. At 52, it just doesn't seem like enough. He is a, uh, a much better producer when Kevin Durant isn't in the lineup. He is asked to do a whole lot more than normal. 61.6 last night against Sacramento. Huge game there. 59.6 against Golden State. 34.7, 63.2, and a 48.6. So in his last five games, he's went over 52 quite easily in three out of five. So I like the success rate out of James Harden. Um, against Phoenix here, no previous games against the Suns, so we can skip ahead and talk minutes tonight. 36 minutes is his projected total. He is a combo guard. Now, combo guards against Phoenix. Phoenix allowing a pretty high average, but somehow they're, they're ranking in terms of how generous they are to combo guards in terms of fantasy points per game allowed is just at 20, but they're allowing 48.32 fantasy points per game. So expect James Harden to get his tonight. I, I think that's a safe way to uh, to phrase that. Now, this is a back-to-back -back situation and three games and four nights for Harden. Fatigue could absolutely be a factor here. Harden was playing late into the game last night versus Sacramento. Despite them being up by about 20 points at one point late in the fourth. So that was kind of weird, but 
37.7 minutes per game. He sees the floor quite a bit. One of the higher guys in the entire league in terms of minutes played per game. 1.35 fantasy points per minute to go along with a usage rating of 28.4. Again, without Kevin Durant in there, those numbers will most likely be on the rise in terms of fantasy points and usage rating. So love to see that there. Now, the totals and spread are looking quite nice here. Phoenix, 118. They are a five and a half point favorite. Five and a half point favorite against the Brooklyn Nets. If you look at the combined uh, totals for the teams here, it tops that 230 mark, looking at about 230.5 to be exact. So, loving this game in terms of fantasy potential. I do think that Roto Grinders and uh, prize picks might be a little bit underweight on James Harden in terms of his projection. It looks like there's going to be a ton of points, ton of production here. Of course, you got the little narrative of James Harden versus Chris Paul, uh, former teammates in Houston. Maybe there's a little bit of an added edge that both of these guys will play uh, with here tonight. Uh, we'll just have to see how it goes. But I think I think Harden can go over 52. That's just my uh, initial off the top, first impression of that number. Now, talking about the Phoenix Sun side of things, Chris Paul is their highest projected guy on prize picks right now. He is set at 38 fantasy points. He'll be the last guy we discuss on the video, and then we will wrap it up. So thanks for hanging in there, guys. Now, the point guard here for Phoenix is set for 38 fantasy points. So if we go over to Roto Grinders and take a look at Paul, well, they've also got him at 38, slightly over 38 at 38.67. So that would be a slight over versus his projections on prize picks. Let's look and see what Paul's been up to recently. All right, so as you can see, pretty decent game logs, but definitely a bit inconsistent, a bit volatile. I wouldn't say that... Uh, We've got a firm grasp on how Chris Paul's been doing lately. 36.7 against Orlando, playing just 28 minutes. Now, he was probably a victim of blowout there. So uh, Orlando has not been able to keep up with most teams this season. So that 28-minute mark was probably due to a blowout. 44.6, 50.1, going back four games here. 26.6 in a 40. 2.9. So it's been a little bit of a mixed bag here for Chris Paul. A little seesaw-ish, a little roller coaster-ish, a little yo-yo-ish, up and down. If you can't catch on what I'm what I'm saying here, but against Brooklyn, he doesn't have any recent game logs, so we can move ahead and talk minutes. 32 minutes is his projection. He is considered to be a distributor point guard, according to Roto Grinders. In other words, a pass-first point guard. Now. Good news for him is that Brooklyn, they haven't uh, defended pass-first point guards very well. And I wouldn't say that uh, Kyrie Irving or James Harden are very interested in uh, playing defense. I think they're more interested in outscoring their opponents rather than stopping them. I, I, don't, I don't look at either one of them as like fantastic two-way players, offensive and defense. So um, Brooklyn allowing 20.29 fantasy points per game to pass first point guards such as Paul, which makes them the sixth most generous in all the leagues. So on paper, matchups looking pretty good. I do wish this fantasy points per game allowed by the Brooklyn Nets was a bit higher. Uh, 20 is not very much, but three games and four nights. A little bit of a fatigue factor for an older player like Chris Paul. 32.3 minutes per game, 1.14 fantasy points per minute to go along with a usage rating of 24 point. 17 so um not great but still pretty good still pretty good with uh you know keeping in mind that he shares the basketball with Devin Booker and even DeAndre Ayton to some degree so not bad for Chris Paul so um this is a game again high totals spread not green but in the yellowish orange range for me so um you know I'd probably stick to taking first half type of plays from this game. I don't know that uh, I feel completely safe or comfortable taking any of these guys in a full game format. I wish the game was a little bit more competitive according to the Vegas odds makers. I wish that spread was a little tighter, a little closer. But uh, yeah, overall, I feel pretty good about fantasy production just based on the team totals from uh, both sides of this game. So that's going to wrap it up for today's video, guys. 
who do you like that I discussed? And do you like them over or do you like them under? Do you agree with me or disagree with me? Is there somebody that I mentioned that maybe we didn't get a chance to discuss more thoroughly? If you're part of the premium discord, I'll dig even deeper. You just name that guy. Drop his name in the Discord, and I'll talk about him even more for you guys. I don't mind doing that. But, yeah, we've been on a heater lately. Uh, That is going to continue tonight. I have supreme, utmost confidence that we will figure out the daily puzzle that is Prize Picks NBA. So, that's going to do it for me. This is CJ for Out of Bounds DFS. Let's keep everything going. We've got some great momentum going. Let's win some more money tonight, guys. And until the next one... We'll catch you then. All right. Peace.